Welcome back. This time what we're going to talk about is the different interrupt modes. Uh, so there are two modes. One is called the compatibility mode. It's like so that you can work with legacy apps that were written, written a long time ago. And then there's priority mode, which is kind of the new way of uh, doing things. It's not that new, but it's newer than compatibility mode. And it's if you uh, get the choice of how you want to do something, you should pretty much always use priority mode. So let's go ahead and look at what they are. So first off, there is a bit um, called IPIN, so Interrupt Priority Mode Enable is what it stands for. It lives within the Archon uh, Special Function Register. If you leave it as zero, you're in compatibility mode. If you set it as one, you're in priority mode. Priority mode is the one we care about most, but compatibility mode is so simple I may as well explain it to you. The difference between the two is um, in compatibility mode, there's only one interrupt service routine. It's called the high interrupt service routine. And then in compatibility or in priority mode, there are two. There's the high ISR and the low ISR. So that's the primary difference between them. Uh, just to look at some more things, um, in compatibility mode, you always had to turn on interrupts globally. Um, and then if you wanted to use um, one of the other interrupts like wasn't as common, it's called a peripheral interrupt, you also had to turn on peripheral interrupts. You have to turn on global to use peripheral, that's just how it works. Um, so there were still kind of two different things, but they all called high ISR. The new way of doing it, um, you have two global interrupt enables, so there's the high um, and then there's the low. Comically, you have to have highs on in order to use low. And then the big difference here is that you must set um, each interrupt individually as being high or low. So let's go ahead and look at uh, a graphical description of what I just said, because I like the graphical description. Uh, the graphical description uh, for compatibility mode looks like this. So this is compatibility mode. First thing is you've got to globally enable interrupts and then you've kind of got this area of cores over here. The core ones, like they decided what was going to be core, uh, you don't get a choice about it. The core ones for whatever reason are the three push button interrupts uh, that we use a lot. So these are the three push buttons we did in the last video lecture. The timer zero one um, and this other push button one that we don't use, this is the like RB4 through RB7 one that we don't really use much. Um, it's also core. And then everybody else that's not one of those five is peripheral. Not sure why they made that choice that way. That's just how they did it, right? And so if you want to use these guys, you have to also turn on that uh, peripheral interrupt enable, which is P-E-I-E -E because somebody else was called P-I-E. No big deal. And no matter what, it calls high ISR. Looking instead at a graphical view of what priority mode is all about. So you've got high priority interrupts. Um, and you can set individually like who they are. Interesting little tidbit. Um, the RB0 interrupt, it can only be a high. Like you cannot make it a low priority, which is weird. I'm not sure why that happened, but it, it's fine. You always want it to be a high anyway. Um, so you can set them like individually to be high or low um, by setting the special function register for them. If you want lows to be on, you also have to enable lows. So this is the G I E L um, and the highs was G I E H bit. I think that's within NCON, but we'll look at it here in a little bit. And the main difference is it lets you organize your code. So you can have the highs call the high function. Um, sorry, the highs do call the high function. The lows do call the low function. And you can kind of organize it a little bit. The other thing is a high priority will interrupt a low priority interrupt. So you can actually interrupt with like a low priority, but then that can get like superseded by a high priority interrupt. So it's kind of a way to like have something that is an interrupt but not very important, um, and then an interrupt which is very important. So <clears throat> not that hard a concept, um, and to make it even more clear, um, Dr. Olson made a really nice web tool. Um, so it's an interactive web tool for figuring up interrupts. Let's go ahead and figure this out just a little bit. So you can find this over on the course website. 
Uh, the course website under Interactive Interrupt Flowchart. There should also be a link from today in the calendar. And this is the flowchart for how you should go about doing interrupts. The first question you should ask yourself is, are we using compatibility mode or priority mode? If we want to use priority mode, these links actually work, right? So it says set priority mode um, to on. Uh, and the way you do that is Archon Bits Priority Mode. So you set Archon Bits IPIN to 1. And you'll actually notice that our template does that already, right? So it sets Priority Mode to on. The other thing you'll have to do is you'll have to turn on the high priorities. Um, and you'll see that our template code actually does that as well. So we're kind of going through this flowchart. And then once you click on that link, you can go back. Uh, and the first, the next question is, is are low priority interrupts being used? Um, so if you wanted to, uh, you could have low priority interrupts. And the thing that you set is you set uh, this special function register right here. We're going to add special function. We're going to add lows to our code. So let's just go ahead and do it. So I'm going to set that thing right there to on. So now we're turning on both the high priority um, and we're turning on the low priority. Okay, great. We know that we're, they're going to be on. Nobody's been set to use them yet, but we know it's going to be using it. Next step is enable the specific interrupts you want. So depending on what interrupt you would like to use, if you want to set the special function register directory directly, uh, here's how you can do it. Typically with the timers, I always use the library function. Um, and then for these guys, sometimes I use the library function, sometimes I, I write the special function register directly. Um, that step has already been done in our code because we've got all three on right here. Uh, so kind of continuing through this flowchart, uh, set the priority for all interrupts except RB0. So we kind of got lucky in our example last time. We didn't set what priority they were, so we just got whatever the default was. Um, it turns out that it was high priority for these interrupts. Just hoping for the best, though, is, is never good programming practice, right? Um, so typically, uh, you would want to set these. And so the way we could set them to explicitly say what we were lucky happened last time is we could say set them both uh, to high priority. If we do this, they will call the high priority ISR. Um, but just for the purposes of example, let's change them to both be low priorities. So <clears throat> interrupt zero is still high because it has to be a high. You don't get a choice. Uh, but these other guys are going to be low priorities. All right, so uh, that should be good. Let's go keep going through our flow chart, though. Um, next is, are you using RB0 through RB2? Uh, yes, we are. Um, and if we are, then we need to define the edges. Um, I chose in this example to use the library function, so that's actually already done. And then the last step is write the appropriate high and low ISRs. So the only thing that we need to change for our example for it to like keep working um, is that we move these two guys. So I'm going to move them out of the high area, um, and I'm going to move them into the low area. So. This is just for example. You could have had them all be high, that was fine. Uh, but I want to prove uh, that you can put them in the low area and it will call the low ISR. So it should work exactly as it did before. The only difference at all is like, if you interrupt the low one with the high one, that works. Uh, but you can see that they count up. They should probably still be a little bouncy, uh, which is what we're gonna fix next time. So I like to do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and then see how big it was. That time it only went to 11. Uh, but you can see the example still works. All right, so that's all I really wanted to do this time. Uh, I just wanted to uh, teach you the difference between high priority uh, versus compatibility mode. Uh, there's the example in here of what we changed to make them low. Most importantly, make sure you enable low priority interrupts because that's not in the template. So if you use them, make sure they're, they're on. Um, and here's how the code changed to break it up where there's some high, some low. All right, we'll see you next time where we uh, debounce these buttons a little bit. See you then.